The, the phrase is, I am me, and on the back of the t-shirt, I am more than what you see. Um, let's just open this That's up. Exactly. Yep, let's just open this up. What does that phrase mean, I am me? Well, the whole, the whole idea behind I am um, denotes that, you know, if you want to get religious a little bit, I am means God, the I am that I am. But it also helps us to realize, too, that if we use I am this, we are putting a specific power behind those words by saying I am, it, whether it's negative or positive, could actually change the whole context of, of the sentence. Okay. So I am me is, is, in my opinion, is something that it defines, you know, who the inner person is, me. Does that make sense? Sure. So we're defining the inner person. Why is that important? It's an identity right. statement. Yeah, if you don't know who you are, then you can't get much done, I wouldn't think. Okay, so let's let's okay, let's get personal, right? So if, okay. if I am me is an identity statement, what is that what does that suggest? If 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 I state I am me, what can we assume about that statement. What can we assume about me because I made that statement? That I am not Peter. That I am not Logan. I am not Betsy. I am not Brian. I am me. And who is me? Tim. Why does that matter? Why do we care? I because it's on our soul. I think I think one of the things one of the biggest things this world lacks a lot and one of the things I'm trying to teach my kids the most is taking ownership in their lives ownership in their feelings ownership in their reactions to others ownership in in their emotions whether they're positive or negative and how and, and how they're dealing with them but it, you say i am like that's that's a statement like i like this is me like she's like you're saying and i am owning that and i don't care and i'm being hey <laughs> and like rush he is <laughs> Owning, right? Who Kids is, are welcome. Uh, this is real. He doesn't, uh, yeah, he doesn't wear a lot of clothes, and so he's owning what he looks like, and I like it. So, no, he's a good kid. But, yeah, he, I think it's just ownership, and, and when people take responsibility for um, and accountability for their situations, they they tend to get better. And when they, they feel like they have, like you said, you have control of the situation, you have needs, what was the other triangle we were just discussing value value yeah when you take those you you start with your values and you've got your your needs and your control when you own all six of those things your life can only get better and, i mean it's not gonna get worse i would think for sure <laughs> right so so ownership and identity right i am me is that means that i'm nobody else i'm my own special unique little snowflake. And I've, I've told people before, and I, and I feel like there's tremendous value in this statement, but um, statistically speaking, and I, and I like statistics, I, it's, it's, I know I, I'm weird, um, but statistically speaking, um, an individual human is, is an absolute um, miracle of nature, meaning Betsy, there never has been another person exactly like Betsy, and there never will be another person exactly like Betsy because she is a statistic impossibility to repeat who she is. Um, and unless I had a twin. Unless you had a twin, except for that twin is not an exact carbon copy of the other person. That twin, although they share very similar genetics, are their own unique snowflake, their own unique fingerprint, their own in their own individual person, even though they may look like the other. So within that statement, and Betsy, you brought in God at the very beginning, like right out of the gate, right? Um, yeah. Within that statement, what I see is that there never has been another me. There never will be another me. I'm on this planet to do something. And if I don't get it done, if I don't figure out what that thing is, then it's not going to get done because I'm the only person who can do it. So some people might think, oh, wow, that puts way too much pressure on me to try to figure some things out. 
Um, well, don't you think everybody needs to have a purpose and find their purpose? hundred percent. I believe that, that purpose okay. is one of three things that we need in order to be successful. Um, so let me let me expand on that just a little bit. In in what I'm finding, if on a business level, I am finding that individuals are starting to gather what I call three separate identities: identity of a core individual, self, God, whatever whatever we were born with. That's religion. That's spiritual. Then they start a business, and what do they do? They create a business identity. And in many cases, that business identity then transcends into a worldly identity. How the world needs to be seen, or I need to be seen in that world. On an individual basis, without a business, you generally have the two. But as the concept goes of I am me, identity at the core, if we stay religious, it's I am valuable, period, on a religious God-given value scale. I am valuable. However, when we step out of me and into the world and we start getting other identities attached to myself, we start losing what we call me because the world wants to be seeing me as a certain way or I think they want to see me or they, several ways. Or they might try to force me to be right. something that I am not. Um, in fact, I think, not I think, human behavior is very interesting because as a human species, we don't like things that are different. We like consistency. We like comfort. We like to recognize. We like to understand. We like to be able to predict. And so when, when things are different, um, it's, diff it's hard. It creates anxiety under most circumstances, right? So there are some people that try very hard to make everybody the exact same way in an effort to create a more comfortable environment for them. And it's not necessarily the exact same way. There are some people who really try to force us to be exactly like them. And so the metaphor I would use is, is you, they often say you can't, you can't put a round peg into a square hole. My statement is, yes, you can you, if you use a hammer. Um, but the problem with using a hammer to drive a round peg into a square hole is you're destroying the peg. You're, destro you're destroying the object that you're trying to change, right? So from this perspective, and we've, we're talking about value, we're talking about, about um, personal, individual concepts of, of who I am, what I can do, what, what, what was I born with in this world with strengths and weaknesses. The question is, is what... Again, why why does it matter if I know who I am or if I don't know who I am? And maybe maybe the next question is was there a point in your life in which you had no clue who you were? As opposed Absolutely. to you sitting today. Absolutely. And what's the difference between that, understanding right? right what's the, go ahead, Brian, sorry. No, I just like I think you spend your whole life figuring that out right i mean i just started reading a book called man's search for meaning by victor frankel and the recommendation of uh, a 23 year old kid uh, that plays football at, at the university of utah Brayton covey and i was listening to this podcast where they were interviewing him this this woman was interviewing him it's, it's quite a few months old but um, I was listening to it, and I'm like, man, I've, I've got to have my kids listen to this. My 10-year-old and my 8-year-old have got to listen to this kid and how, like, I mean, I could only hope to be this grown-up today as this kid is at 23. And that's a product of his family. And that, I mean, and, and the Coveys are obviously, his grandfather, Stephen Covey, wrote, you know, obviously one of the fa most famous business books ever written. And I think, honestly, was divine inspiration i think he wrote that on the fact that he spent his knees and he just like me he was worried about his kids and he's like how do i raise good kids what do they need to do well they need to do these seven things and he wrote a book and it was inspired by god and it turned into him and that's what god can do if you let him and i think and god will do that to any one any person on this earth no matter where they are at whatever point they are in their life, like if they 
if they're entitled to and he and they come to him with a sincere heart, like it says, in a contrite spirit. I mean, I don't know how many of us are LDS on here, but all I of us of you are. But if you know, you know that we've heard it a hundred times since we were eight years old, right? But you, he is no respecter of persons. He, you ask and he gives, and that's just how it is. And everyone has a purpose here. I. I have a purpose, and I, at 41 years old, I just barely learned that what that was two weeks ago, and that's why my that's why I haven't been here for two weeks is because I just like my whole life has just got a I don't know where it's going, but I know that somebody else is driving the ship, and I'm just along for the ride. Are you willing to share that? <laughs> it's a little maybe maybe okay. a different time. Yeah, it's it, it involves it involves about a hundred million dollars. So, and no, it, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you know, you're, you're you're completely fine. Like, yeah, like it comes down I to mean, finding that me. Who is me? Yeah, and 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 who that is, and who I am is I I believe that there should be a place for single moms that have kids that suffer from mental illness, addiction, PTSD, abuse, verbal, physical, sexual, that have kids that need help. And they don't, and they don't have anything that they can't, they can't put their kids anywhere and they can't go get treatment because someone's got to watch their kids. And so I want to build a facility, a ranch that women can go stay in treat in patients that they can stay there and their kids can be on the same property and maybe not, you know, when you first get there, you need to be alone and you need to separate and, but at least they know their kids are there and they're safe and they get to, you know, at least see them once in a while and know with the way the world is today and and like you want you love your kids and i know i loved my kids through all my heroin and all my needles and all my crap and i i loved my kids and they were what got me sober and like and making sure that they turn into good human beings and and people that can help other people and this is all about them and i and, and i know that there are other kids out there that need parents and that need and that need sober parents and that need healthy parents and and they need and they just need that structure and they would turn into wonderful wonderful human beings instead of you know and and they're all, everyone's wonderful and they're all and they all have potential but honestly you there there's a lot wrong with the world today so for sure okay so did you all just hear that identity statement that was a very long, concise, that is, I am me at the core. But, and that is, honestly, I am me. Honestly, that's just authentic. You want you want to know what I am, and that, that's who I am, and that's what I believe in, and those are my values, and that's, there's nothing more than just being authentic, and, and people appreciate it. People want authenticity with the Absolutely. Instagram and the Facebook and the filters and the and and I, I I've gone to a wedding, so I know I've got my hair cut, and I look like probably a million bucks. I feel like a million bucks because this barber he was just like magic ham. <laughs> and it was a hole in the wall basement in Orem on Center Street, right off the freeway. So if you need your hair cut, go there, and it, he is awesome. But um, anyway, it's just like it's it, uh, there's just so much wrong with with. And, and people not accepting mental illness and not accepting the fact that, that everyone struggles and everyone's got problems and and why are we trying to make everyone fit in a square hole? Like <laughs> let's make all three I, I want to see a thousand different polyanthrum whatever, polygon everyone should like I that was the thing I loved about this barber shop is the kid that was cutting my hair was Malaysian. He had tattoos, head to shoulder, piercings all over his face. And I never felt more like a brother when he was talking to me and sharing his life, growing up in West Valley, being part of a gang. And and then I got a kid that's from a Cambodian kid over here getting his hair cut. And the kid over there was, we were joking that he kind of looked Vietnamese, but he wasn't. And so we were just like, yeah, he's Vietnamese. And we were talking about it. And it's just like, and and then the other and then the kid over there getting his haircut was black and this kid and it was just like I have never seen that much diversity in Utah and God it felt good like it felt good to just carry on and clown with these guys 
and I and I felt the spirit there, and I know I was the only one member of that church, of our church. I know for a fact, but God was there because those guys were brothers, and God wants us to have family and wants us to help out, and that was a family. I saw it for sure. Yep, it's a community. You're exactly right. So, what's your thoughts, Logan? Sorry, that was a rant. Oh. No, it was a beautiful right. rant. Um. Gosh, I mean, the only thought I have is just, you know, thanks, Brian, for sharing all that. Um, you know, it's it's true. I mean, we all need to feel like we're a part of something, um, you know, and it's, it's a lonely world sometimes, and depending on your life circumstances, it can get pretty lonely. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, it means a lot to feel like a family unit, no matter where you're at. Um, as far as the phrase, you know, I am me, I'm just the only thoughts I had was just, um, I was just thinking of like, I guess just an individual accepting their weaknesses and that their weaknesses define them. Um, you know, and, and if you're trying to overcome your weaknesses, I mean, that that's growth all the way across the board. Um, and you know it's and for me um i'm trying to put all my thoughts thoughts out of my mouth but for me from my experiences like i'm i'm super hard on myself um and then like you know if if i have a weakness i try so hard to like focus on the weakness and just to figure out how it'll become a strength um and so um so i mean sometimes it kind of sucks because i feel like i just am just bashing myself to the ground and just putting so much pressure on myself to be perfect or somebody that um i don't know i guess like creating this shroud of perfection even though i know that's not what i'm gonna achieve um but yeah i mean i i think our weaknesses define who we are again um and just you know we our weaknesses are meant for us to for us to have them you know and and some of our weaknesses we can overcome them to help other people um and to help other people overcome their their weaknesses and their things that they're going through um and so so yeah those are just some of my thoughts sure so, yeah. you're, you're talking about what what defines me or or what what makes me me right and so yeah. it, it, and if we look at both sides of it you're talking about weaknesses the opposite side of a weakness is a strength and every human being is born into this world with things that they can do well and things that they struggle with for instance math is exceptionally hard for me i took pre-algebra in high school six times um in in undergraduate when i was when i was in working on my bachelor's degree i took math all by itself and it took 28 hours a week for 14 weeks to get a B minus in college algebra. And the reason why I didn't get higher in a B minus is there was no way in hell I was putting more than 28 hours a week into just math so that I could get higher than a B minus. Um, and my goal was to go into the final with a straight A, knowing that I was going to fail the final and end up with a B minus. That was my goal to get through college algebra. There's a reason why I'm not an accountant, and there's a reason why I'm not a mathematician, because math is exceptionally hard for me. It's hard for me because I struggle to remember numbers, and I struggle to remember names. It's just how my brain is put together and connected. And so one of the ways that I look at it is, is the amount of energy that it took for me to succeed in a college algebra class versus um, in my graduate studies. Um, I graduated, I mean, I, I can sit down in front of a computer and I can read empirical research and I can understand it and I can write about it and I can teach it to other people. Teaching is a skill of mine. It's, it's a God-given skill. I was born into this world to teach people. Because I can so understand. Let's ask the question. I can understand That's complex. That's a defining factor for you, yes, Daryl. They're both defining factors. Yes. But is math truly a weakness, or is it not as elevated in you as others? Mathematics is a difficulty for me, and so okay. I choose a path that takes less energy, and it's not there necessarily I'm taking a cop out. I'm not copping out of it, meaning. I am, teaching comes naturally for me. 
And so because it comes naturally, I don't have to put all of that energy in in order to be successful with it. So I embrace what I'm good at. My God-given gifts, what I've brought to this world with, if I can teach naturally, then why am I not using that as a gift? Now, again, if we go into a spiritual or a prophetical, hey, as a prophet, I can learn to play the piano. I can I learn to play. No, no, we're not talking that. Me, I can never learn to play music. That is not a skill that I can get. I would, I would argue there. you could, but it would take a lot of energy, more energy it than you're willing to put into it. It would take more than 28 hours a week. Right. And therefore, I kind of go, eh, I'll just go on my strengths too. Yeah. So therefore, we as a community, we all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. I love music like the next person's, but what do I do? I take the participation aspect. I will listen to your gift. I will participate in your gift and enjoy it as much or more than maybe you do. I have a weakness, therefore I will use my strengths in other ways to uplift others in ways that they may not be or have the same strengths. That is the beautiful part about being me or being you. We find those strengths and we support those mothers who have been drug addicted, who have children, and what do we do? All of a sudden, we're now supporting them because of my strengths, lifting them up. I am me, and I am here to support. Thoughts, Peter? Well, I think, based on what Tim just said, I think because we have those gifts, um, it's almost our duty to, to share them. I, okay, and right, and so you're yet at the end. That, that's actually, in my opinion, a fairly profound statement. And and meaning, so one of the first things that that I said that that the way that I see the world, is is that, again, Peter, that there's never been another person like you on this planet. There never will be another person like you on this planet. You are both a collection of those things that you can do well, and you are a collection of those things that you struggle with, and so. If we have a gift, and I promise every single person does, I mean, I've seen, I've seen Brian's carpentry work, and he's exceptionally better at finish work than I ever will be. Um, there's a reason when I build stuff out in my garage that I do what I call rustic, um, because <laughs> I incorporate the, 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 the roughness of, of, the, of the, the angles and whatnot into into what I build, and it works for me, right? So it's no wonder you didn't go into taping doing drywall. <laughs> so, so, so the concept is is finish work, right? I mean, I did construction for ten years, but there were things in construction I was much better at than trying to figure out angles on a constru- on 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 piece of trim, right? Because then again, there comes that math brain that I struggle with. Anyway, again, the point is 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 Peter, you say that that we have a duty or even a responsibility to work towards our gifts or to work toward our strengths. And Logan, you're saying that, that our weaknesses have a tendency to define us. I can agree with that, but why can't we switch that and, and maybe as a society start worrying more about what we do well rather than about what we struggle with? Why can't we start, why can't we start judging people? Why can't we start looking at people? Why can't we start categorizing people based on what they do well? Hey, um, so I have a thought, a bit, and it's just kind of popping into my head as I'm listening to people talk about their strengths and their weaknesses, and they're kind of picking out, you know, uh, sorry, it says laptop on your name. That I, Laptop and tie-dye, they're the same person. That's Tim. Tim. That, that, Tim. Brian, this okay. is my brother, Tim. Tim. So I, I'm sure I've met you, and if I have, I apologize. So Tim, you said something about music. You said that you can't, you couldn't learn it, but you listened to it, right? Absolutely. What, Love what, listening. What, what, what type of what type of music do you listen to? 
Uh, I go from Bing Crosby down to the Big Band era, right up to a okay. little bit of Metallica, a okay. little bit. I mean, Coldplay, it's it's very dramatic. But when it gets into the actual, what do I enjoy the most? 80s alternative. That's what I enjoy the most. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Say, so the 80s alternative, okay, name me something. Uh, Aha is one of those. Okay. You've got... Depeche Mode to a certain they're extent. They're the British Invasion. Take on me. You've got uh, Flock of Seagulls. You've got, I mean, this Duran Duran. You got this right here. This is a good tune. Okay, so listen. So listen, it doesn't, it's not that you can't learn music. You understand it. You know what good music is, right? And you know that it's kind of hard to argue with all of those when you started naming, you know, being Crosby. I mean, these are like classic people, and there are some people that sort of don't like it. But it's like music brings out something in the art, and you can, and, and maybe it's music, or maybe you're looking at a painting, or maybe for me it's like furniture. There's something that you can appreciate and, cre and create in, in something that has to do with art as well as in science, and as well as, and I think these are the things that God wants us here on this earth to understand and to grow. Now, obviously we gravitate towards things of least resistance. So I'm gonna do, you know, we've, we've had the exercise co the conversation before. I'm gonna do what that comes naturally to me and that's lifting weights because it's done, I've done it since I it could walk because I wanted to play football my whole life. And it, that's all I wanted to do as a kid. That's all I wanted to do as an adult, practically. I would love to go do it now. I wish I was Tom Brady. He's older than me, and he's, you know, holy crap, he's the best player that's ever walked this earth. But it's, you, you gravitate what you like and what you towards and what you're good at. But there are physical things and spiritual things and mental things and emotional things that if you can take those four areas of your life, and whether that's music or maybe it's art or maybe it's playing the piano or maybe it's, you know, whatever it is. But there's some there's some type of art that you can understand and that you're good at and that you can create. I promise God has given you that gift. Sure. And he's given those four gifts to every single human being on earth. I know that because we came here to develop those gifts and then share it with other people and then help other people by doing so. I know for a fact because I have spent my the first week of my unemployment and my business, whatever you want to call it, not making a dime, doing building a room for a woman that has a walker and her son has got a melted one son that got that just came home from Kansas and, and he had somebody had to fly out and drive him home because he was suicidal and another son that had just committed suicide six months ago and she's scared to death that she's gonna lose her other kid. And he needs, and like that kid is the sweetest boy. You, and he's, he's off a mission. He came home early and he's struggling. And that's another thing that I want to do with the single moms is put another facility for kids just like that, that, that are, that are, that just don't understand what's going on. I've got a nephew that was raised in a church and he's gay and he doesn't understand why. And it's BS that people can't accept it. And because he's got gifts in art and he is smart in science and he is and emotionally he is sensitive and he is smart and he lives in the shell and he had to move a thousand miles away from Utah because he's because gay. He's he's afraid to be himself. He's he's afraid He's afraid to be me. He's afraid, he's afraid to be he's judged to be by the rest of the world. I'm afraid to show the world who I am because I'm afraid that they're going to reject me for who I am at my core. But and you may not be able to learn how to play the piano, but I guarantee you, you could maybe conduct music. You don't have to bring the music out in people, or, but I do. You, or you could, you could bring emotion by selecting good music at the right moment, at the right time, you knew the right song to play on the speakers. I heard it in my ears, and I had goosebumps. I have them right now. That is an artistic gift. I promise you, God is. Can't create it, but I can replay it. Yep. And you know when to do it, and you know how yep. to elicit emotion, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to elicit emotion and passion about things that maybe are hard or difficult for us, because that's how we get better. 
that's what makes God proud of us. That's, that's why we're here is we're, we got these bodies that he's given us that he created that he spent billions of years writing the DNA code, billions of years writing that code for just me to, to write down what is in me, my instruction book. He spent billions of years writing that for just me. And I'm just grateful oh, that they have this stupid haircut that matches my kids that get a perm and they're like, oh, why didn't you get a perm? And it's just like, he did that for me. And he did that for you and Logan and Peter and Tim. And it's like, Betsy, it's like all that. And that little girl right there. Right there. And he'd do it for just one of us. And we're here to make sure that we experience it. For sure. And that we get better at it. And so that we know that the, the person that we can go out and help that has fallen, that it is, they just can't stand up by themselves. And they just need help. And we have to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of someone else. That's for sure. Yep. So would it be fair to say that I have to understand who I am before I can find success in this and world? Before you can help somebody else understand who they are, yeah, you got to understand. Absolutely. Who they are. So okay, so how do how do we how do we find ourselves? How do I understand who I am at my core? You have to face the man in the mirror for one thing. Face the man in the mirror. Yes, you do. I had a conversation with a gal just this last week, and she says, yeah, self-help, 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 self-improvement. And I went, yeah, fantastic. Then why is what we're talking about and me going into desire, purpose, belief, control, value, connection, eliciting a lot of thoughts and behaviors that you never went into with the self-help? And she says, well, I am not sure. And I says, that's because you were trying to take this journey by your self when we go into a self-help attitude or self-help need or i am missing something if we go on the journey alone we end up staying on the journey alone and we get confused we get lost we we don't know what to do however if we take an action partner with us daryl let's go on this journey what changes in the equation it two people is already we, Two people is always stronger than one if they're unified in purpose. If if all of the energy is being wasted, clashing and fighting and battling about how things should be done or what things should be done, then nothing gets done. But two unified people are always stronger than one person by themselves. There, there's something, and I don't know what it is, and I can't explain it, and I don't know how I know this, but I know this. And it has something to do with with gamma rays because i learned this somewhere in physics and i can't remember where but it may be somebody that knows a lot about gamma rays it's like comic book guys wasn't the hulk wasn't he like gamma i don't know anyway gamma radiation yes yeah there's something about gamma radiation where it can't be stopped by like the earth it can go through the earth or is that am i on the right track here? you you are correct there is there is some radiation that permeates yeah. so so x-rays so x basically permeate they they travel through things yeah so they measured a, a person that like had a way of measuring somebody's gamma radiation going up from one person to another and when that person was thinking positive thoughts about that other person they could actually measure a difference on the other person physical so there connection is something there is something that connects all of us and that i mean that's everyone knows that there's a you got to be stupid not to understand that we're all connected somehow but two people doing doing something that's why we have two people giving priesthood blessings that's why we have two people as witnesses like if you want to be religious about two it. or more yes but but, it, uh, but i promise you that's why aa works is because all those people are there for one reason and they all share that reason and that combined and reason that creates, creates increased better power than just one person can do alone right or and just and it's just two people is all you need and that is a stronger connection because there, when two people are working together, something about that God says yes, and he puts more energy, and he puts more success into two people rather than two other individuals trying to do the same thing. 
even if they're working towards the same goal, even if they're working at, as a unified goal, if they're not working together, they're not going to get there as quick as if they're working together. For sure. And, going and if you take, and that's the difference between an internal motivation and an external motivation. When we talk about the difference, Tony Robbins is an external motivator. When we're talking about I am me and we get into a community, Brian said it perfectly. We actually give each other and share with each other our energy, our motivation, our whatever you want to call it. And that rubs off on everybody else in that group. And we stay internally motivated, which means what, Daryl? I act, right? Because I'm internally motivated. But if I'm by myself, I lose that motivation quickly, very quickly. Because it's not, it's part of your value, and that value is inside of you, and that that emotion, those values create that emotion, and it is a chemical. Those emotions create a chemical reaction. I know tons about chemicals. Trust me, <laughs> I know all of them. I know how they all work. And I know how they all affect me. I tried every single one of them. And, and, I, and I know emotion, I know all about it for a different reason, for the exact yeah, opposite. And you chase me, and guys like you chase me around forever. All right. But I and so, but that emo, it's the same chemical reaction. It's the same chemical reaction, except you're just getting it naturally, and he, and your body likes it just as much. And you cannot fake that. And no. that's why it changes you. No. That is internal. That is programming. That is, I change the code of my brain. So, so Logan, you, when, when we were talking about how do we, how do we discover, how does a, how does a guy, a random person discover who they are? What did you say? I said rule number nine. Enlighten us. What's rule number nine? All right. Um, so I guess just to make a long story short, Rule number nine means figure it out. Um, Daryl, do you want me to give like a background or? Come on, this is me we're talking about. Of course, I want the background. My wife and I we're always argue about Gibbs. Is that a Gibbs rule? I, I have I I I give the twenty five hour version. My wife gives the twenty five second version. So so yeah, give us give us some place in between that, right? All right, so. One time, I was on the drum line at Utah Valley University, um, otherwise known as the Green Men Group. Here we're just a bunch of asparaguses running around doing weird things. So, my drum line instructor, um, he so at the very beginning of the year, we had our drum line camp, and it was basically you know just a weekend of us just playing drums and learning how to like interact as a mascot with with the public. So um, there was a point in time during that drumline camp where uh, we were all sitting in a room and the drumline instructor handed out this sheet of paper. And at the top of the paper, it said rule number nine and it had the story. And basically the story was about this lady that was at her like drum and bugle corps camp. And basically she just forgot something in the trailer and she went up to her instructor and was like hey i forgot this thing for the show it's really important you know and then she had all of her other responsibilities and schedule to keep up with and so all her instructor said was figure it out so then she was like well what, what the heck does that even mean and so he just like figure it out so that's rule number nine. Um, and so basically what that means is just figure it out, you know, take, take the initiative and um, make it your responsibility to figure out your questions um, and to basically act on what you need to get done and figure out just, I guess, you know, again, just really what you, what you need to do. Um, and so the reason why I responded to that, to the question, was just because sometimes, uh, you know, nobody, nobody else is going to tell us what our purpose is in the world. Um, and so it's up to us individually to have that desire, to have that motivation to figure out how we play um, the part in society, how, you know, what our purpose is, you know, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, what 
we are going to do in life to do the most good. So, R- rule number nine: figure it out. So, who but am that's I? The thing. Figure it but out. That's the thing: is you don't have to figure it out. You already know what it is. Yeah, at the you, core, you already do know. Yes, you're absolutely right. You, you do, do know. Too. You just yes. have to remember. You've already been told. You've already chosen <laughs> what people. You've. I've already chosen. I chose to be an addict. I chose to be a carpenter. I chose to. I. I want to be a painter. I want. I like. I like. There's a lot of things that I have chosen to do, and I. And these are not. I'm. Those aren't decisions I'm making today. Those are decisions I'm remembering today. And, and I guarantee you, Logan, and Peter, and Tim, and everyone on this phone call, and Betsy, and Daryl, you guys know what your purpose is. You just got, you have to find it. It's like, it's like that, that cartoon. There's a movie I just saw. Like, I was, I slept through some of it for my kids on Sunday. I was tired. But was it's it Soul? Was it Soul? Was yeah. It soul? Yeah. Yes. That well, was you're, incredible. You're, you just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You just find something you like and then find a way to help people. That's your purpose. Step out of the other identities and back into I am me. That's where we need to go. I am me at the core. Who am I at the core? And when we get there, that's where we get the answers. Not from the identity of the world. The world wants us to be. Not from the identity of business or the identity of being attached to things. I know a lot of people who their identity is attached to their job. That is their identity. No, 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 no. I am me as not my job. It's not. It's a reflection of who I am. It can even be as simple as your children, too. I knew that my identity was attached to my children quite heavily until I realized it. it. It really, I didn't realize it was just a hat I wore. I thought that was just me, a mom. What I do is a reflection of who I am at my core. Hey, hey, Betsy. T- let me tell you. Let me ask you something. When when you felt when you felt like you were the best mom in the world, on yeah. a scale of one to ten, how happy were you? Uh, I mean, more than ten. I felt really happy. And why do you feel like that is? Because I'm honored to be the mom of these beautiful children. I don't know. I just, they fulfill me. But it doesn't mean that they are the only thing that fulfills me. But you had a purpose. I did. You had a purpose. And you saw your purpose was to raise children. And you had a purpose. It wasn't your identity. It had, your children weren't your identity. But your identity was involved in raising kids they just happen to be your own well i did it for 22 years so far and it's been but the other aspect you got to remember betsy is you weren't gifted to have your own biological biological children what did you do i went out and got them i adopted yeah and like there are so and and that's there are so many kids that that need that and there's so many kids that need direction and and one of them was actually addicted to drugs yeah, if you can ever say that, hey, I was helping, if you can say two things, I, if you can say two things, that I was helping someone else, and I was, on a scale of one to ten, I was a ten or more happy. If you can say those two things, that's your purpose. I, that's easy. That's well, your that's, purpose. It is part of my purpose. I've already figured out what my purpose is in life in general, but yes, it is absolutely helping people in every aspect of my life. So, yes, my children are part of that, and they are my life. But now that I'm becoming an empty nester, it's a little bit differently. I have to kind of shift focus a little bit more because my children are <sighs> going off and doing their own thing. They're, they're, they are becoming adults, and they're, they're, they're creating their own ways, and they're figuring their own things out. And, and Their own I am me. I am me. Yep. So the, yep. the conversation we've been having is, is about the phrase I am me. And I am me, from, from my perspective, I am me speaks of, of, of my own value, my own individual value and the individual value that every human being has. Um, and when I, when I discover the courage to look inward, to discover who I really am, um, I believe firmly that that is what creates the strength 
to press forward and actively engage in those things that that we do very well those things that that only we can do those things that that make us uniquely us um and and if there's nothing else that that i would like to do is i i would like to empower people to embrace who they are but but adding to that i would like to empower people to put in the work necessary to really figure out who they are um, for me i'm 47 years old it took me probably 45 of those 47 years to really figure out who i am but That's now that i have an, now that i know who i am that gives me can a i share can i share brother brent i have brent all good business partner i have a brent bingham i i know quite a few brents but our brother brent i worked with him individually as a business owner specifically as a business owner we went through a, a quite a bit of time where we were working on i am me with brent and ultimately he sent me a text this week that was really quite powerful to preempt and kind of go where we were going he had identified in what he wanted and where he wanted to go with business in 10 years down the road he wanted to be stepping into the position where I am creating a cul-de-sac. I am creating a and building from the ground up a community, groundwork, houses, the whole nine yards in developing this, this cul-de-sac community. He sent me this on Tuesday and he said, so I went from in January not having any real direction in what I want to do and how now in March negotiating a multi-million dollar subdivision deal. Basically, what we ended up doing is he was able to find I am me and make my business I am me and make what he's going to do I am me. And 10 years has now been shaved off of this goal and vision of creating a subdivision. Because I am me was found. My strengths, my values, my gifts my abilities i am me what i can do 10 years knocked off what i can do i i i would suggest that the the phrase i am me has more to do with what i can do rather than what i can't do and mm -hmm. and the the strength again the really the the concept behind this is really letting go and accepting the truth of who i am and understanding that the truth of who I am has such tremendous value that the world cannot function without me. The world cannot function without Peter's beard. No, it cannot. And when I superimposed mangoes on people's faces, I think Peter's came out the best. I agree. 